youngsters out of bed. It's pert near daylight. <laughs> hey, what's all the racket? It's time to go to work, lazy bones. But, Granny, it's five o'clock in the morning. Better late than never. <laughs> I'm a big city boy now. Nothing can get me out of this hour. You want breakfast? <laughs> Granny. For a city boy, you move pretty good. <laughs> Uncle Jed's already at the table. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Ellie really, May! Oh, you're up. Yes, ma'am. But I sure am sleepy. You young'uns wouldn't have this trouble if you went to bed at a decent hour. Well, I went to bed at 9 o'clock. There you are. Now, take your rooster and put him out. Have some breakfast. And then we'll go down and get the Clampett Enterprises ready for business. Friends, the bank building won't even be open. Folks in Beverly Hills don't get up this early. But they... They don't, huh? You know who that is at the door? Who? Mr. Drysdale. He's riding into town with us. At five o'clock in the morning? He didn't stay up half the night like you did. <laughs> he knows this is the best part of the day. It's the early bird that catches the worm. So, he's up, ready to go. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Drysdale. Where am I? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> G Granny, you, you call me. What, what, what's the trouble? No trouble. We need you to open up the bank building so we can go to work. It's, it's, it's five o'clock. <laughs> the stars are out. The moon is shining. It does make you feel good, don't it? <laughs> Jed always says up at five, you're sure to thrive. Wait till six, you're in a fix. <laughs> what time of day is it going to be? Rotten. Well, I best go check the weather signs. Well, doggy, Mr. Drysdale, why, well, you're the first city fella I ever seen with gumption enough to get going for sunup. Well, I always say up at five, you're sure to thrive. Wait till six, you're in a fix. That's what I always say. We're kindred spirits, Mr. Clavett. You're wrong, Mr. Drysdale. It's going to be a fine day. Good. Have you had your breakfast? Granny, you know he's had breakfast. But well, this man keeps country hours. How about some coffee? Well, fine, fine. I'd love it. <laughs> you still got on your night clothes. What? Oh, oh. You see, I, I didn't want to turn on the lights and wake my wife. I reckon you beat her up regular. No, but it's a great idea. <laughs> oh, you mean get up ahead of her. <laughs> well, let's go have that coffee. You go right ahead. We'll be right with you. Oh, thank you. Chief! Chief! <laughs> what, what, what? It's only 8.30. What are you doing here at this hour? This hour? I've been here since 5.30. How come? I'd open up so the Clampets could go to work. At 5.30? Yeah, so now on they want to open up at 5. <laughs> You're wearing pajamas. Oh, oh, oh. I was so sleepy I forgot to change. Oh, I, I've got a suit in here. Please put it on immediately. If someone came in here, do you realize what they would think? What would they think? Well, they, 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 they think that perhaps you hired me for reasons other than my secretarial ability. As a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> yes, you were cheap. <laughs> you were living there for a minute, weren't you? Just for that, I hope the clamp will stay in the fifth floor for a year. And get you up at five every morning. I'm getting rid of him today. I'm bringing in a hired gun. Gee. No, 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 no. He's just a troubleshooter. But he's the best cunning, cruel, ruthless, unprincipled, conniving. Oh, a beautiful man. <laughs> oh, by the way, his name is Homer Bedlow. Good morning. Good, good morning, Mr. Bedlow. How did you know my name? Well, you fit Mr. Drysdale's description perfectly. <laughs> now, you and Mr. Drysdale friends? I don't have any friends. <laughs> I hope Mr. Drysdale will find my work pleasing. I'd like to give up my job on the railroad and stay on here. A bank offers wonderful opportunities. 
That's true. You get to foreclose on mortgages, repossess cars and furniture. I'll bet it's a great kick to go and get a television set just when the kids are watching their favorite show. <laughs> May I ask what you're looking for? Snipers. Booby traps. Well, surely you don't suspect Well, it's that... a force of habit. I didn't get to be this old and mean by being careless. <laughs> That's all. Right. And you're Milburn Drysdale. That's right. I'd have known you anywhere. You're the spitting image of your father. You knew, Dad? Worshipped your father. He was the meanest man I ever knew. <laughs> oh, Dad would have loved hearing you say that. Excuse me, Chief. Your father would have loved being called mean? But you never met the old gentleman, did you? No, he was gone when I started working here. Well, I'll see if I can find a picture of him. You know, my first job was working as an office boy for your father. Really? Oh, I'm surprised he ever let you get away. You and Dad must have been two of a kind. Well, of course, that was 50 years ago. I was a dumb kid, had no sense of values. I goofed and he fired me. What did you do? He was flogging a debtor and I went to her defense. <laughs> My defense? He was striking a woman? That was the wonderful thing about Mr. Drysdale's father. He never discriminated. <laughs> ah, here we are. I thought I had a picture of him around. That's my dad. <laughs> what a man. It was a privilege to have worked for him. You know, I was with him the day he foreclosed in the old soldier's home. Really? Gee, I envy you. He had a pile of canes and trusses and air trumpets as high as that desk. Cleaned them out. There were giants in those days. <laughs> Us happen to see us together. I caught you snooping around the fifth floor here. Right. Now, this is Granny. Oh, she's a dentist, huh? Dentist, doctor, surgeon, barber, obstetrician, <laughs> you name it, she does it. Doesn't look like an educated woman. Never went to school in her life. But she did all these things back in the hills, so she figures she can do them here. Now, this is Mr. Clavett, my largest depositor. Looks like a nice fellow. Yes, he is. Strange, too. Growing up, he had everything going for him. Poverty, ignorance, hunger. He could have been rotten to the core. Turned out nice, huh? Yes. Somewhere along the line, he went wrong. Maybe he had a happy childhood. That can warp a man. Thank goodness I had your father to teach me the three R's. Rookin', robin', and repossessing. <laughs> Mr. Clampett. You heard me, Badlow. I said Jed Clavin is my friend, and you leave him alone. <laughs> and stop bothering Granny and all the Clavits. Now get out of this building before I flatten you. <laughs> Strike a man with glasses, you can go to jail. I'd go to prison for Jed Clavit. I'd hang for Jed Clavit. I'd face a firing squad for Jed Clavit. But Jed Clavit is a prince among men. He is my friend. Mr. Grady. Stay out of this, fella. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clavit. <laughs> Gee, I hope you didn't hear what I said. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh. So ashamed, I lost my temper. But I mean it, Bedlow. You get out of this building and stop bothering the Clavits. Well, he ain't bothering us. Huh? I headed him off. Now get out of here and don't come back. <laughs> you haven't seen the last of me, Drysdale. I've got City Hall on my side. And the Clampets have me on their side. I want these people out of this building. Over my dead body. <laughs> Where's that fellow on the side of the building? Oh, he's just one of those officious meddlers. He claims that Granny doesn't have a medical school diploma or even a license to practice medicine. As a matter of fact, I don't believe she did. You know, he even had the nerve to ask me if you belong to the Teeth Whittlers Union or the Harness Menders Guild. Oh, I never knew there was such a thing. Well, just ignore him. He's nothing but a nitpicker, a busybody. Well, and I best not put up Jeffrey's picture and sign. Don't tell me he's gonna be an agent again. Oh, he ain't even that high. He's lowered his sights considerable. He's gonna be just a psychiatrist. <laughs> Psychiatrist? <laughs> Or claims he looked up to spelling. <laughs> also, fish clean. Well, that was my idea. Jethro's uncommon good at it. And it seems to me the two just kind of goes together. Psychiatry and fish cleaning? Yeah, he says that psychiatry is just listening to the folks talk. He can sure skin a catfish while he's doing that. <laughs> I'd best leave it down. No, no, no. Put it up. No one's going to push my friends around. Oh, Mr. Drysdale, I was just coming down to your office to get you. 
Let's go try on this uh, upper plate that Jed whittled for you. Oh, 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 Granny, I'm, I'm, I'm awfully busy. That's true, Granny. This man has been fighting our battles first. What battles? There's some fella from City Hall here threatening to turn us out of the building. How come? Well, for one thing, he claims you don't have the proper medical education. Me? <laughs> that learned doctrine from John Hopkins? You studied medicine at John Hopkins? <laughs> I can vouch for that. Granny rode a mule all the way to Timbo, Arkansas, just to study with John and Elviry Hopkins. <laughs> John and Elviry Hopkins. Probably the greatest. Husband and wife, yard doctor and team in the history of medicine. How long did you study with them, Granny? Oh, I took the full course. Then I done what they call postgraduate work. All in all, I was there put near two weeks. Well, unfortunately, I'm afraid that won't impress the authorities here in California. I'm in trouble too, Granny, because I don't belong to something called the. Uh, Keith Whittler's Union or the Harness Mender's Guild. How about Jethro? Is there a psychiatrist union, too? Well, I wouldn't doubt it. Couldn't we just let the boy clean fish? Well, no, that's where we're really in trouble. The International Brotherhood of Fish Cleaners. <laughs> but don't you people worry. I've thrown myself between you and the enemy. I shall not pass. Well, Mr. Drydale, you can't buck the whole state of California single-handed. Then I'll go down fighting. <laughs> From the halls of Sacramento to the shores of old L.A. I will fight my Clampett's battles and protect them night and day. My dog is granny. I never realized Mr. Drydale was such a scrapper. He's got to have some Tennessee blood in him, Jim. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, I found another picture of Mr. Drysdale's father in the storage vault. My hero. He looks positively vicious. Yeah, great guy. Bureaucratic <laughs> meddlers, I will shield them with my might. And if I should fall, there'll be a new star in heaven tonight. <laughs> I've got a great scheme to get rid of the Clampets. Don't you dare. What were? That's what you hired me for. We're in this together. Me? I won't betray a friend. Good for you, Chief. <laughs> oh, Dad. Forgive me. I had a nice thought. I didn't mean it. Don't beat me, please. Chief, your father can't beat you. He's dead and gone. Oh, no, no. Not Dad. If he couldn't take it with him, he didn't go. <laughs> thinking straight now. But why can't I be the man my dad was? He was perfect. Mean all the time. Now that you've come to your senses, we can put my scheme into action. Is it a scheme my dad would have liked? I call it Operation Rotten. Great. Now get up and win this one for the old jipper. Well, just a minute. You're in this too. You've got a part to play. I have? Sure. I'm the bad guy and you're the good guy. You got a white hat? Well, I can get one. Good. Now, my scheme is I'll go up to the Clampets and give... Is she to be trusted? No. He's honest, kind, and generous. Please don't use that kind of language in front of your father. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. Right. Oh, put Dad's picture up. It'll serve as an inspiration for me. A shrine. How about some fresh flowers in front of it? That's a good idea. See if you can get some deadly nightshade and hemlock. Those were his favorites. <laughs> a dirty, rotten old man. <laughs> well, Mr. Cratchit, how's Granny's hair pull this working? That's what I'm here to find out. Sit down and we'll have the unveiling. Yes. Ma'am. How long has the poultice been on? Oh, a week. And I'm sure glad to get it off because everybody's been laughing at me. Well, they ain't gonna laugh no more. <laughs> Is that him? It ain't more. They come in red. Uh, really? Uh, I had red hair when I was a boy. They used to call me Brick. Take a look. It's true. I'm young. 
I'm handsome. <laughs> you sure enough are. It'll look much better when I pomade it and comb it. No, I like it this way. Wild and untamed. It's the real me. <laughs> here, 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 here. Behave yourself. <laughs> Mothers, hide your daughter. Wait, Cratchit. It lives and is on the loose in Beverly Hills. Really, honey? Run fetch Jetro. I think this fellow needs psychiatry. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wait a minute, Blondie. Let's go out tonight and live it up. Jed, I think he left the poultice on too long. It's drawn up some ideas along with his hair. He can handle the hair all right, but I ain't so sure about the ideas. <laughs> Ellie says this little fellow needs a head shrinker. Oh, don't shrink his head. His new hair won't fit him. Come on, I'll cure you. I don't want to be cured. Come over here, Blondie. I'll behave yourself. Oh, watch it, fellas. I'm a redhead and I've got a terrible temper. <laughs> now, give me a couple of minutes to terrorize them. And then you come to the rescue. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wish Mr. Drysdale would send up the rest of his employees. Well, don't worry, Granny. If these folks see how you poultice hair on Mr. Cratchit, they'll come in bunches. Well, while we're waiting, sit down and I'll give you a Marcel. All right, everybody out. What? You heard me. Clear out and take all this junk with you. Junk? Now, stay here, Mr. Don't you touch me. I've got a writ. Well, no wonder you're feeling so mean. Come on, sit down and I'll answer for you. I'm talking about a legal writ ordering you to vacate these premises. And I'm going to serve it on you right now. Hold it right there, Butlow. Rysdale. <laughs> you craven coward, threatening a couple of helpless women. Come out and fight like a man. Oh, trust me, Drysdale, I've got a legal writ right here. Mess with me. And I'll serve it on you. Come ahead. I've got a writ stopping your writ. We'll see who serves who. Are you calling me out, Drysdale? I'm calling you out, Bedlow. You fool. <laughs> you haven't got a chance. You're a banker. And I'm a professional writ server. <laughs> Truth, honor, and justice will speed my hand, and my strength will be that of ten. For my heart is pure. What's going on? They fix them to draw down on one another, Jed. Yeah, they both got legal writs. I serve you first. You're wiped out, Drysdale. You lose your bank, your home, everything. I'll gladly pay that price to save my friends the clap it's strong. No, I can't let you do this. Mr. Drysdale, if this fella wants us to get out of the building, we'll go peaceful. <laughs> I whipped you, Drysdale. You did not. Stand aside, Mr. Clapper. Let me at him. Let him go, Jed. Let him fight it out. We don't want to leave this place. No, we caused Mr. Drysdale enough trouble. But he'll say I turned yellow. Then I let down my best friend. Well, it's better than getting wiped out. Come on. Commence packing up. <laughs> Congratulations, Bedlow. You were terrific. You were pretty good yourself. You mean the clavets are gone? Operation Rotten was a complete success. Now, we'll talk about my fee. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, well, how much do I owe you? Give me a job in the bank and you don't owe me a penny. You mean it? Turn me loose in your loan department and I'll show you rottenness you never dreamed of. It's a deal. <laughs> when do I start? I'll get in touch with you. Have a nice trip back. Goodbye. Goodbye. Chief, surely you're not going to hire that evil man on a permanent basis. Of course not. But I get rid of the clampets, and it didn't cost me a cent. You mean you deliberately swindled Mr. Bedlow? That's the way Dad would have handled it. Mr. Rogers' office. Oh, yes, Mr. Clampett. I see. Yes. Yes, well, I, I'll certainly tell the chief. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Yes, well, thank you. Goodbye. 
Appreciate what? The Clavins have decided you're the best friend they've ever had. Oh, that's me. They're proud of the way you fought for them, and they're not going to let you down. You're right. They're staying on the fifth floor and going to fight with you. <laughs> Dan, what happened? I played it your way. I was rotten to the core. I double-crossed everybody. Where did I go wrong? I wasn't lying to you. Mr. Drysdale turned this whole fifth floor into a health and welfare department. <laughs> and you say it's free to all bank employees? Yep. <laughs> I don't believe it. Not for Mr. Drysdale. Oh, it's true. This beautiful red hair didn't cost me a penny. She did it. <laughs> the dentist? Uh huh. Must be a wig maker, too. No, 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 it's true. It's my own hair. She grew it. Here, pull it. To run your fingers through it. Wash it out. Again. Once more. Uh, we believe you. I know, but I like it. That red hair's gonna get you in trouble, Mr. Cratchit. Just call me Brick. <laughs> hey, girl, look at this. Harness mended, teeth whittled, shoes fixed. <laughs> That's right. Mr. Clamper does that. Isn't he the man that has $80 million in his face? That's right. Who has $80 million? He has $80 million and he whittles? He's eccentric. He's new, Billy. He's beautiful. I'll bet he's married. No, he's a widower. He's beautiful. <laughs> Relax, you don't need any harness mended or teeth whittled. I got a shoe that needs fixing. Looks okay to me. How about now? <laughs> What's going on up here? Get back to your desk. What do you think this is? It's the Employee Health and Welfare Department. Who told you that? He did. Who told you? Uh, you did. I lie a lot. Now get back to your desk on the double scram. But Mr. Drysdale, you told me you were going to start a comprehensive program of employee benefits. Yes, we're supposed to get free dentistry, free surgery. Free... Stop using that filthy four letter word in my presence. What four letter word? Free! <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, what about the Clampets? You promised them you'd send them all your employees. They'll be angry. So what? When I see the Clampets, I'm going to tell them to get out! <laughs> Mr. Clampett, Granny, get out. <laughs> We've been looking for you. We've been looking for you, too. When are you going to come in sending up your employees? Well, here they are. I brought them up myself. Oh, well, that's Danny. Come on in. Ah, here we go, children. Health and welfare time. Follow your leader. <laughs> Is it true that you fix shoes? Well, uh, yes, ma'am. Look what I did. Oh, well, uh, I'll have that fixed in a jiffy. Oh, thank you. Oh, here, let me help you, ma'am. Well, girls, seeing that there's no emergency cases, I'm going to take your leader first. <coughs> me? What for? I'm going to pull them bad teeth of yours and fit you with this upper plate that Jed whittled for you. No, 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 no. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Oh, they're beautiful. Jack would love those. Jack? He's a poor old fellow that works with me. Hasn't got a tooth in his head. Th that's what I meant by no. I was thinking of poor old Jack down there without any teeth. You take care of him first. You mean that? Yes. The health and welfare of my employees must always take precedence over my own personal needs. Tell me. Uh, thank you. I'll go along. He might not believe his good fortune. <laughs> well, girls, who'd like to be first? In the dentist chair. <laughs> hey! Looks like we got us some customers today. Uh, anybody need psychiatry? Oh, yeah! yeah. yeah. Well, come on, right here. Right here. Come on, right in your house. Uh, Doug, looks like I found my last work, Granny. Why do all them girls need psychiatry? They hate their mothers. They hate their mothers? Why? I'll find that out when I lay bare their heads. No, no, 
There'll be none of that. Funny, the id's in the brain. I reckon that's where the word idiot comes from. More than likely. I'll learn them to free associate their psyches and traumatize their complexes till they goes to loving their mother. Where do you get all this talk? I've been reading about old Sigmund Freud. Who's Sigmund Freud? He's a fellow that started this whole thing. Over to Vienna. That's the capital of Australia. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. We is crawling with patience. Mr. Drysdale is fetching them up by the batch. Now, get their names and write them down in your book. There's five girls in Jethro's office. You can get their names later. Well, what is they being trained for, Doctor? Best I can figure out is that he's giving them idiot lessons. <laughs> anyway, he's turning them into mother lovers. <laughs> How come you brought along the pussy cat? Oh, well, Louise is getting ready to have baby kittens, and I didn't want to leave her home alone. <coughs> Can I put her in the maternity ward? Strictly speaking, she ain't one of Mr. Drysdale's employees. <laughs> but she could be. Quick as she's done having her babies, she could go to work cleaning out mice. Yeah, all right. But don't tell nobody. We'll put her in the book as a cleaning woman. <laughs> Good. She ought to have more of a name than just Louise. Well, we could call her Mrs. Cat. Dandy. We put down that Mrs. Louise Katz was admitted to maternity this morning. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Granny. <laughs> and mark down that it was emergency. <laughs> Come on, little mama. You is the first maternity case of Mr. Drysdale's health and welfare plan. <laughs> Oh, Ellie, why don't we call the first boy Milburn Drysdale Cat? Good idea, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really carve this, Mr. Clampett? Yes, ma'am. Pitch that log from back in the hill. It's beautiful. It's a uh, primitive Rodin. No, oh, ma'am, that's Arkansas cedar. <laughs> Shoes ready? I was referring to the sculptor. The man? Oh, uh, the man is Jim Owen. Shoes ready? You want to sit down? I'll slip it on here. Oh, oh. be careful. <laughs> Thank you for catching me. <laughs> I wish I had a man around all the time. You fall a lot, do you? <laughs> no. I mean, uh, it's such a comforting feeling. A man who's tall, strong, rugged, handsome. Has anyone ever told you you look like John Wayne? No, and uh, I hope nobody ever says it to John Wayne, neither. <laughs> Hi, Louise. I mean, Miss Kath. Hi. She ain't commenced having her kittens. Uh, I mean, babies, yes. <laughs> Reckon I'll stay with her in the maternity ward? Good idea, Ellie. But put on your nurse's uniform. Make it look real official. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Come fetch me if you need help. I will. <coughs> you say this is a crow call? That's right. You just blow it out a couple of times and an old crow will come right to you. You met a bird. <laughs> well, Ted, I see you got her shoe fixed. Yep, she's ready to go back to work. No, I'm not. I mean, she hasn't checked me over. She's right, Jed. There's more to her than just feet. I'll grant you that. <laughs> Look right over here, honey. I'm either going to have to lengthen that dress or shorten them legs. <laughs> What's your name? Carol Bennett. Swingmore Apartments, Crestview 5, 7399. Are you married? No. I live all alone at the Swingmore Apartments, Crestview 5, 7399. I ain't hard of hearing, honey. Now, I'll check them teeth. Oh, yeah. Fine. <laughs> Dandy set of teeth. 
just perfect. Even Jed couldn't whittle them no better. I'm glad to hear I have perfect teeth. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to have to soundproof them gums or take a chuck in your lips. You got too much voice for the size of your mouth. I can't find enough secretaries to type these documents. Oh, well, they're up on the fifth floor getting health and welfare from the clamp. Let's go round them up. Right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? Uh-oh, bad. Carol Bennett's up there. Who's she? A new girl, a nightclub singer. It is my opinion that she took a job here only to get a line on your biggest depositors. Jed Clampett! Precisely. Well, why did you hire her? I didn't! Well, I should have screened her. You did? What did I say? Wow. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Drysdale, I've done psycho these here secretaries. They don't hate their mothers no more. Good, good. They hate you. <laughs> well, the feeling is mutual. Now get back to your desk. There's work to do. Oh, but Mr. Drysdale, I found out why they hate you. You just give me the word, and I can cure them like that. Then can I go back to work? Just like that. Right. You cure them. <laughs> you heard him, girls. Everybody gets a raise. <laughs> I don't like to hurry you, Doctor, but Miss Bennett here is needed at her desk. Well, I'm done with her, but she says she wants to take lessons from Jen. Oh, what kind of lessons? Harness mending. Let's go. <laughs> she don't want to take time off from work. She says Jen can come up to her place at night. Oh, it's a fine girl. Very ambitious. Oh, that's the truth. You don't find many girls wanting to mend harness these days. Hi, oh, Mr. Wayne. I mean, Mr. Clampett. Doctor, you need it right away in maternity. Maternity? Yes, sir. Louis, I mean, uh, Mrs. Katz is about to have a baby. Hurry, oh. Doctor. Who, who, who is Mrs. Katz? She works for you. She's a cleaning lady. Oh, ready, wait. <laughs> Cleaning woman can't have her baby here. Ain't this the health and welfare department of your bank? Well, yes, but, but uh, I'd better talk to her. Are you the baby's father? Uh, of, of course not. But I'll get in touch with him. Well, you don't know who the father is. You don't know who the... Uh, uh, what? Isn't she married? Strictly speaking, no. Well, Granny, that, that woman should be in a hospital with a real doctor. Real doctor? Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, Doctor. Oh. If this gets out, I'm ruined. Mr. Drysdale. You're fired. Really? Yes, really. You go back to singing. That's a good idea. I'll start singing right away. Bye. I'll sing to the newspapers, the health department, TV, radio. You wouldn't do Oh, yes. They love these unwed mother stories. You're hired again with a raise and a bonus. What kind of a bonus? Free lessons in harness mending at night for Mr. Clampett at your place. <laughs> Dad, I know you go to that great bank in the sky or wherever it is, but you always said if I ever really needed you, you'd find some way to communicate with me. Well, Dad, I really need you. Please... Send a message to me. Listen, Dad, I'll tell you what I'll do. You know that little church in the valley, the one you always thought was so quaint and pretty? Well, if you'll get me out of this mess, I'll go out there right now, and in your name, I'll foreclose on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm unable to trace this Mrs. Cat. That's obviously a phony name she gave Granny. She isn't even married. Unwed mother! If this story ever gets out, I am ruined. Mr. Drysdale, old Jack says you can have the teeth back. He can't use them. Why not? Well, he says on what you pay him, he can't afford to buy solid food. <laughs> you hear that, Dad? That's gratitude for you. <laughs> it's him! <laughs> Rosemary's father, <laughs> the Prince of Darkness. Mr. Drysdale's father? Oh, I worked for him 40 years ago. I was six foot tall then, but he, he, he beat me down. <laughs> Don't be frightened of Mr. Drysdale Sr. He died many years ago. Oh, I'm not so sure. I said then we should have driven a stake through his heart. <laughs> oh, uh, 
Oh, I, I, I forgot. And Mr. Clampett whittled this for you. He said, being a bird watcher, you might like to have it. Oh, dear. <laughs> Stop making that silly noise and get up to the maternity ward and see how Mrs. Katz is doing. Right, Chief. Please, Dad, get a message to me. Give me a sign. Dad! You come back. You're going to help me. Oh, look, I got your picture up. I'm proud to be your son. Dad, you know the spot I'm in. Tell me what to do. <laughs> Got a message for you, Mr. Drysdale. Granny told me to tell you the cleaning woman had a boy. Is everything all right? I reckon so. Uh, they named her Milburn Drysdale Cat. <laughs> they named it after me? Yep. They'd like to name the second one after your wife. <laughs> it's twin? Oh, no, sir. Triplets. <laughs> Ain't named the third one yet. Dad, what'll I do? Oh, don't turn your back on me. I need you. Talk to me. Please. Dad? Dad, Dad, is he talking to that crow? That's no crow. That's my father. <laughs> How'd you like to come up to my psychiatry office? The couch is empty right now. Go away, Jethro. Leave us alone. Dad won't talk to me while you're here. Sure, sure. I'll go. But I best take this along with me. It looks kind of sharp. Sure nice seeing you, Mr. Drysdale. You too, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> Bye. Miss Jane, he needs help. You're telling me. <laughs> well, Chief, I have the latest bulletin from the maternity ward. Yeah, it's triplets. No, quintuplets. Five? Here's some more on the way. Oh, no. Did you hear that, Dad? Dad, don't leave me now. I need you. Dad, come back. Coward, deserter. Oh, you really are mean and rotten. Did I hear you refer to that crow as Dad? Yes, he came from the other world. He flew in here in answer to a call. And flew out when I told him what the call was about. Chicken! <laughs> If that's the newspaper, I'm not here and you don't know anything. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale's office. Oh, y yes, Ellie. What? Seven? <laughs> yes, I'll tell him. <laughs> Chief. I heard, I heard. Well, where are you going? To the nearest bar. Well, go to one that doesn't have a television set. If this news gets out, they'll beam it off the satellite. <laughs> Look, this is, is too big to hide for long, especially with Carol around. Speaking of Carol, that girl acts as though she owns this bank. She may. <laughs> she may. <laughs> oh, hi there, Miss Carol. Oh, uh, what's the latest on Mrs. Katz? And a dandy bunch of young'uns, seven and all. Seven? That must be a world's record. Oh, no. Back in the hills, I've seen as many as 12 or 13. <laughs> The young'uns are doing just fine. Ellie May and Jethro's going to take them all up to our house. The mother's in there, too? Yep. <laughs> Is there room? Oh, sure. She had her last babies in a hat box. Uh, may I have a look? Sure. But don't scare now. It's the cat. <laughs> That's right. And we'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Mr. Drysdale. He thinks she's a cleaning woman. Don't worry. I won't tell. I'll be back directly in case you need cycling. I can talk Mr. Drysdale into giving you a raise. He already gave me one. And I think I better start earning it. I wonder when the rest of Mr. Drysdale's employees is going to come up. You know, I kind of wish they don't show up. Probably if I ain't getting kind of homesick. Me too. Where is everybody? The maternity ward is empty. Oh, Jethro and Ellie Mae took the mama and the babies home to our house. Are they all right? Oh, sure. You can stop worrying about them. They're fine. Oh, bless you. But I'd still like to find that father. Well, if it's any help to you, the last one looked like a Persian. <laughs> Persian? Oh, that don't mean nothing, Jed. Two of them look like Siamese. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, 
Would it come as a big blow to you if we was to move back home? You mean leave? All of you? We won't go if it's going to put you in a bind. Oh, no. Not at all. You, you've done enough. In fact, you've done too much. All oh, right. We'll commence packing quick as Jethro gets back with the truck. No, don't wait. Go now. Miss Hathaway will drive you, and I'll have all this stuff sent out by truck. Oh, what? Uh, would you like to have this as a souvenir? <laughs> well, thank you. Beat it, Dad. I don't need you now. Howdy, ma'am. Hello. Is this the health and welfare department of the bank? That's right. How soon are you expecting? Oh, any time now. Well, step right into the maternity ward. Wait a minute. Who's she? One of your employees, I reckon. I've never seen you around this bank. I work nights. I'm a cleaning woman. <laughs> Last time I had triplets. Well, maybe this time we'll do better. <laughs> Don't stand there. Help me get this door open. The elevator ain't there. I know. I want to jump. <laughs> Now. Won't be lonesome no more. <laughs> Uncle Jed, I still say we hadn't ought to moved out of that bank building. Well, boy, what's done is done. Yeah, but I was just getting my psychiatry business going good. Why, well, yesterday alone, I cured five mother haters. Yeah, got them back to loving their mothers. Well, maybe you can be a psychiatrist here at home. Granny's gonna go on with her dentistry. Which room do you want me to put your dentist chair in, Granny? I think I'll just let you bolt it down to the bed of the truck. You figure to practice here on the truck? Why not? You know how people hate to go to the dentist. This way, the dentist will go to the people. You think folks is ready for curb service dentistry? Ready, willing, and anxious. Why, just driving along. The minute folks seen this chair, their mouth just fell open. <laughs> Bobby Joe? No, still no answer at the Clampets. Doggone, I've been trying for six days to call those people. Hate to just drop in on them. But if I don't get going, I'm gonna miss my plane connection to Los Angeles. I can send a telegram for you. Hey, that's a good idea. Uh, say I've been trying to get them for some time, that I won a contest for selling the most soybeans, and my prize is a trip to Hollywood, and I'll call on arrival. I'll take care of it. Oh, yeah, and I want to thank you and Billy Joe for minding the store for me. I'll be back first thing Monday morning. Don't worry about a thing. We'll have it all cleaned up by then. Good. Cleaned up? Oh, didn't I tell you? We're having a little party here Saturday night. Here in the store? <laughs> well, the refreshments are so handy. How many are you having? How many on a football team? Eleven. Well, eleven fellas and eleven girls. Twenty-two teenagers? Oh, don't worry. We'll keep track of everything we eat. Well, who's going to chaperone this bash? Uncle Joe. Oh. <laughs> Never mind the twenty-two teenagers. Just keep track of what he eats. Uh, cannonball's waiting for you. Uh, eight balls waiting for me. I changed my mind. I'm not going. Oh, Mr. Jocker, please. You'll have a wonderful time. And you'll even get to see your sweetie again. Oh, now, don't start with Granny. We're just friends. Oh, sure. Romeo and Juliet. Dick and Liz. Sam and Granny. <laughs> You're gonna miss your plane. Well, just send the telegram. Hi, Sarah. This is Bobby Joe again. No, Sam's sending a telegram instead. Address it to Granny Clampett. She'll like hearing from Sam. Oh, let's see. Have been trying to get you for some time. Am coming to Hollywood for my prize. <laughs> we'll call and arrive. Sam Drucker. Okay, Sarah. Bye-bye. <laughs> This thing's got a way of time. Yeah, it's a real finger curler. Where do you want it, Granny? Well, now, let's see. Don't look upstairs. Well, take it in the parlor and set it up in front of the fireplace. But Granny, that's a courting parlor. 
Wouldn't look too romantic having a dentist chair sitting in there. With all the courting that's going on in that parlor, we could have an electric chair in there. <laughs> yeah, but Ellie Mae might have some uh, young gentlemen callers. Jed, when are you going to face the truth? That girl is too old to get a husband. I don't agree. Naturally, you're her father. But back in Tennessee, my old granny had a saying. Thirteen and fourteen, a girl's in her prime. Fifteen and sixteen, she's still got time. <laughs> Seventeen and eighteen, she's just about done. Nineteen and twenty, her paw needs a gun. <laughs> now, take the chair into the parlor like a toad. Hello, this is Granny. Uh, yes, I have a telegram for you here. Would you like me to read it? Well, shame on you. The postman don't read folks' mail. <laughs> now, you get my telegram up here to me and be quick about it. Well, I'll be glad to, but don't you just see, if you let me read it to you now, you'll get the message all the quicker. Well, let me sit down first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who's dead? <laughs> Nothing like that. You see, this telegram is from a Mr. Sam Drucker in Hooterville. Sam Drucker? He's my sweetie. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, here's the message. Have been trying to get you for some time. That's the truth. You know, he proposed to me by mail once, but Ellie's bear at my letter. I see. Uh, then he says, am coming to Hollywood for my prize. Well, that bold rascal, coming to carry me off, is he? Well, it won't be that easy. He's going to have to court me first. Yeah. Uh, well, the message concludes, we'll call on a rival. Well, that's a good joke on Sam. He ain't got no rival. <laughs> we ain't going to tell him that. My motto is to keep them guessing. Once they get to thinking they're the only rooster in the hen house, you're in trouble. <laughs> My old granny back in Tennessee had a saying, men is like mules if you... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? I guess she done heard that saying. <laughs> How's this, doctor? Get that thing out of here. This is a curtain parlor. I thought you said Ellie Mae was too... Who's talking about that child? There's going to be some grown-up courting in here. <laughs> Sam Drucker's coming to town. See you? Well, he ain't coming to see Mae Bush. <laughs> what about that saying your granny had down there in Tennessee? My grandpa had another saying. Old violins makes the sweetest music. <laughs> of course, you have to have the right bow. <laughs> That's a witty saying, Jed. Not too witty. It beats well doggies. Hey, <laughs> May, uh, you didn't know to be playing with fire that way. It's dangerous. But, Pa, I'm cooking with it. Yeah, that's when it's dangerous. I'm biting you and Jethro a pack of donuts. And you're taking them out with my crowbar? Oh, yes, sir. This year, fork just ain't stout enough for lift. Your donuts do have a lot of body to them. Oh, thank you. Go ahead and eat one. Well, uh, Ellie, I, uh, I kind of like to have a cup of coffee with my donut. I know, Paul, so I made you some coffee to go with. Ellie, uh, I kind of like to have my coffee and my donut after my meal. I know, Paul, so I made you one of my surprise loaves. You didn't. Yes, sir. Come on, you can help me lift it out of the oven. Uh, ain't Granny going to get her nose out of the joints with you taking over the kitchen like this? Oh, no, sir. It's on account of Granny getting married to Sam Drucker that I'm a-doing it. She told you that, did she? Yes, sir. Says Mr. Drucker's coming to claim his prize. Well, you know, Granny, she's likely to get carried away. 
Yes, sir. He's going to carry her clean back to Hooterville. Ellie Mae, Granny wants you to come help lace up her corset. Okay, Jethro. Could you? If Granny marries Sam Drucker and he totes her off to Hooterville, you and me's going to starve to death. That's a terrible way to go. Ellie has cooked some vittles. That's an even worse way to go. Jethro. <laughs> Let's not commence swimming till we hit water. <laughs> Sam Drucker ain't here yet, and we don't know for certain that he's going to propose when he gets here. Oh, this time he means business. Granny said he's even ready to take on his rival. He ain't got no rival. He thinks he has. <laughs> Jed Clamber speaking. Oh, howdy, Dash. How are you? Well, Ellie's upstairs right now, but... Well, that sounds like a dandy idea. Come on by. All right? Dash Ritrock has got a new car, and he wants to take Ellie for a drive. I'll go up and tell her the good news. Oh, I'll go tell her, Uncle Jim. I want to see Dash anyway. <laughs> I don't want to borrow his car. Oh, I won't! Oh, howdy, Miss Dane. Mr. Drucker. Hi, Jethro. I was going to call, but I happened to run into Miss Hathaway at the airport, and she rushed me right out. Bye. Have a nice visit. Goodbye. Oh, thanks again, Miss Hathaway. Say, I, I, I know it seems like I'm barging in, but Mr. Clampett said if I ever came to town, he'd take it right poorly if I didn't stay with you. Oh, we got plenty of room. Hey, but don't expect to see too much of Granny. How come? Sit down. <clears throat> Mr. Drucker, that little woman is gone all the time. One date right after another. <laughs> the men just won't leave her alone. Granny? <laughs> They call her the Beverly Hills Butterfly. Play thing of the stars. Movie stars take her out? Take her out and keep her out. You know what time she pulled up here this morning? Well, what time? For the 10.30. Well, well, who was she out with? Well, um, I don't want to name no names, but uh, they was four in the party. Anybody famous? Well, driving was this here well-known Hollywood playboy. And sitting next to him was a blonde. And there was his millionaire sugar daddy. And Right. And this goes on all the time. She only comes home to change clothes. <laughs> and fellas. Your whole family's going a lot. I tried to call here for pretty near a week. We was out looking for Granny. If it weren't for that old hound dog Duke there, uh, we'd have never found her. <laughs> we just have him sniff one of her dancing slippers and the chase is on. Up and down the Sunset Strip, all over town. <laughs> you can see how wore out he is. <laughs> I can't believe it. Here comes one of her fellows now. That big car coming through the gate? Yep. Old diehard Dash Riprock. Dash Riprock? The movie star? Yeah. We call him Mr. Loser. He ain't got a chance. <laughs> well, ain't he kind of young for Granny? How old do you think he is? Or on the movie screen, he appears to be about 25 or 30. 68 years old. 68? Just had a birthday. Well, how can he look so... Makeup. When he leaves the movie studio at night, half of them stays in the dressing room. <laughs> Hi, Jethro. Hi, Dash. Happy 68. Now you mean 69. How about that? It's pushing 70. <laughs> he looks young enough to be courting L.A. May. That gives me an idea. I'll try to talk him into taking out Ellie instead of Granny. Oh, Dash Riprock? Uh, this here Sam Drucker from Hooterville. Pleasure to know you, Mr. Drucker. Nothing wrong? Oh, no, no. It's just that you're the first movie star I've ever seen made up. I, I, I mean, close up. <laughs> Dash, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, gentlemen. Excuse me. That old fella there is here to court Ellie May. Ellie May? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jucker! Hello, Ellie Mae. See? Boy, they don't coo. <laughs> Howdy, Dash. Hi, Ellie. Uh, Dash, I'd like to thank you for riding his new car, Ellie. Oh, well, that sure is a nice surprise. Well, didn't your father tell uh, you? You all have a good time now. Uh, don't hurry back. <laughs> well, it worked, Mr. Drucker. I got rid of Dash. Hey, come on in. I just can't believe makeup could do all that. He looks great. Well, uh, of course, he's had what you call a facelift, too. Oh, I've heard about those. That's where they pull up your skin and hide it under your hair. Mr. Drucker, he's got so much skin tied up on top of his head, if the knot ever comes loose, he'll have to open his shirt to brush his teeth. Sam <laughs> Drucker. Hi, Granny. 
Did you get my telegram? I sure did, you bold rascal. Huh? Oh, yeah, well, I know I said I'd call on arrival. Oh, but... forget it, Sam. There's too many of them. Huh? Oh, I've been telling Mr. Drucker how popular you are, Granny. Oh, how many dates you got? Do you want him to take a number? No, Jethro. Sam's an old friend. I won't make him wait in line. Oh, uh, how about I give him a room towards the back of the house? That way the sports car's coming and going all night won't keep him awake. That's a good idea, Jethro. Don't put him too near the cement pond. That'll be noisy, too. What with Johnny Weissmuller splashing around and beating his chest and giving the mating call of the bull ape. Oh, ain't he Tarzan? Uh, him Tarzan. Me, Granny. <laughs> I'm a little late, Chief, but I... You are exactly 12 minutes and 22 seconds late. That will come off your lunch hour tomorrow. Well, I ran into a friend of the Clampets at the airport, and I drove him to their house. Oh, well, that's different. Any friend of the Clampets is a friend of mine. No lunch hour penalty? Oh, of course not. You can take your full 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, who is a friend? Has he got any money? Very likely. He owns the Bank of Hooterville. Not Sam Drucker. <laughs> yes, he won a contest and the prize was a trip to Hollywood. Don't let him kid you. That jerkwater Jesse James is here to take Jed Clavis' money out of my bank. If it really was a contest, there's something about beans. Yes, 80 million beans. <laughs> well, he hasn't won the contest yet. Try me to the Clavis. Well, Sam Drucker. Glad to see you. Same here, Mr. Clampett. You been here long? Oh, about five minutes. Yeah, Jed. I'm giving him more time than the others. What of it? Oh, well, it's all right, Jed. Sam knows how popular I am with the big movie stars. Yeah, Granny was telling me about the night Bull Montana was here. She was, huh? Yeah. I thought a lot of Bull. You still do, Granny. <laughs> Granny, we're going to have to unlock the front gates. Them suitors of yours is good. Oh, <laughs> Hi, Uncle Jed. Yeah, what's that about the front gate? Well, you heard him. There's a bunch of movie stars out there clamoring to see me. Yeah, let him in, Jethro. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hospitality. That's a fine way to treat Sam. Well, I would like to see them. Oh, you poor devil. Why, they'd set upon you in a jealous rage and tear you to pieces. <laughs> Are you ready to face lust, crazed lovers? Like Lash LaRue, Rip Torn, or Rudy Valley? Granny, ain't this going far enough? Yes. We gotta protect Sam. Now, you go up to your room, lock the door, and I'll call you when it's safe. Well, couldn't I just step out the front door and take a look? The only one of your movie star suitors I've seen so far is Dash Riprock. Dash Riprock? <laughs> oh, it's okay, Uncle Jed. I, I talked him into taking out Ellie instead of Granny. Thank you, Jethro. Now, you show Mr. Drucker up to his room. Yes, ma'am. Granny, why don't you tell Sam Drucker the truth? I aim to, Jed. Good. Just as soon as I'm Mrs. Sam Drucker, I'll confess everything. <laughs> I didn't thank you for the ride, Dad. My pleasure, Ellie. Would you like to come in for some refreshment? That sounds great. I'm hungry. Well, that's good. I'm going to bat you down <laughs> Are those the great big ones like you made before? That's right. Oh, boy. Aren't they good? I never tasted anything like them. Well, you can have all you want. Oh, oh, oh look at the time. I, I'm late to the studio. Thanks anyway. Maybe next time. Bye. Hey, hey wait a minute, Dash. I got to talk to you. Later, Jethro. Hey, wait, I got to talk to you right now. Go ahead, Dash. I'll fix you out some donuts. You heard her. I got to get out of here. Hey, please, you got to do me a little favor. What is it? Come inside and pretend to court Granny. Court Granny? If you don't, Sam Drucker's going to take her back to Hooterville. And when that happens, it means that Uncle Jed and me has got to eat Ellie's cooking. Good luck. Hey, good luck to you. Uncle Jed owns a studio where you work. You struck a nerve. <laughs> but don't you think I'm a little young for Granny? She likes him young. Her big hero on television is the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? He wears a mask. That's right. And a big white hat and rides around on a white horse. I'll tell you what, Jethro. You tell Granny she's got a date with the Lone Ranger. How soon? Yeah, as soon as I can get to the studio and back. Dash for Ghost Donut! Oh, never mind.
Never mind, Ellie. I'll give them to Sam Drucker. You mean you like them? Well, they were a little dry till I steamed them, but that really brought out the flavor. <laughs> Say, where's Granny? I'd like to compliment her. Oh, you don't want to do that. Uh, why not? Well, uh, oh, she's busy right now. Oh, one of her suitors? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Please, Granny. Excuse me. Mr. Drysdale, you ain't proposing to Granny. Oh, no, no. I was just pleading with Granny not to go back to Hooterville. Well, I think you'd best let Granny make her own decision on that. But, Granny, you'll hate it. You'll be lonely there. Oh, I don't think so. Once I'm settled, Jed and the rest of the family can join me. We do like a small town. But you'll miss Hollywood, the movie stars, the excitement. Not me. I've had this Hollywood. I'm all burned out with this wild nightlight. Glad to hear that. Yeah. I'm tired of being a love goddess. <laughs> The Lone Ranger's riding up the driveway. The Lone Ranger, he's my hero! Man. Why, don't you know? That's the Lone Ranger. Now, see what goes on around here, Mr. Drucker? And it ain't even dark yet. Yeah. Hey, want me to get you on the next plane to Hooterville? And leave all this? Don't be silly. <laughs> Let's go steam some donuts. <laughs> You go play with Ellie. This here is serious business. Don't bug me, Abe. I got to meditate. Can't do no yoga exercises. <laughs> Doggone it, a guru ain't got a chance around here. Miss Rose, I got chores for you. That does it. Miss <laughs> Rose, don't bother me, Granny. I'm trying to free my soul. I'll free your soul, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> You sass me. Granny, you'll pay for that. You can't hit a guru. I can hit anything. I can't read. Hey, wait a minute, Granny. No. Oh, Granny. Oh, 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 Granny. No, oh, Granny. Oh, Granny. Oh, 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 oh. Well, he was hanging upside down in my arbutus. I was just doing my yoga exercises. Hanging upside down. Them was possum exercises. Oh, Uncle Jed, you do it to get to be a guru. It makes you smart. I'll make you smart. I'll hit you right across your guru. Oh, Granny, Granny. I'll get it you. It ain't right to use a groom handle on a boy. You're right, Jed. I'll go get a hoe handle. You use a hoe handle on a guru, and you'll be sorry. I'm down, boy. Would you mind explaining to me what a guru is? Well, a guru is one of them teachers over to India. They know all the secrets of the Far East. They teach you how to meditate and go out of your mind. I think you're getting the hang of that. I mean, you go out of one mind into another mind. It's hard for you, ain't it? You not have my education. Well, uh, put it to you simple like. Can you think of my head as a watermelon? Yeah, I think I can manage that. Well, there's two parts to a watermelon. You got the rind on the outside and the meat on the inside. Well, most folks thinks with nothing but the rind. But you takes guru lessons and you bust right through the rind into the meat. Uh -huh. Now he's thinking with the inner mind. You got it made. You done conquered the flesh. You can handle cobras, you can sleep on a bed of nails, you can even walk barefoot through a bed of hot coals. A lot of coal for that, is it? <laughs> oh, he's more. It fills you with kindness and love, too. It gives you understanding. It gives you peace of mind. Well, now you're making sense. Uh, so that's what you're after. Oh, I'm after the movie actresses the guru gets. <laughs> movie actresses? He's wild about gurus, Uncle Jet. They goes clean to India just to see him. 
When I put the secrets of the Far East into this sixth grade graduate brain of mine, they sort of flock to me, too. But can't you just see Elizabeth Taylor and me walking arm in arm, barefoot on a bed of hot coal? <laughs> I like that part about love and understanding better. Don't worry about that. I'm going to have love and understanding who's not of me like sap out of a sweet gum. I'll even be able to understand Granny. Well, that makes it worth chancing. You sure you can learn all that just hanging in the Arbutus? Oh, them your guy exercises was just my homework. I think I got a real guru coming over to see me. Coming from India? From Mrs. Drysdale. I'm trying to borrow hers. He's been over there for a week giving her lessons. But I bet her rhyme's too thick. <laughs> Meditate, my dear. Eyes closed, soul open. Through its portals, you have escaped the body. You are afloat on a sea of serenity. And on the distant shore, you see the great spirit. <laughs> Borne by the cosmic currents, we reach out to him. We embrace him. Softly, gently, we become one with him. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, bliss, bliss, sweet bliss. You can say that again, baby. <laughs> Beautiful, my dear. Beautiful. And now, and now, you are ready. I'm ready? Yes. For the great pilgrimage. You don't mean... Yes, my dear. Oh, Mother Inja, I'm coming. <laughs> Your daughter returns, great mother. Uh, Milburn will never let me go. Oh, my dear, how can you say that? He's such a sweet man. Milburn? <laughs> such soul. Well, I believe that he, too, could become one with a great spirit. Not unless the great spirit is willing to pay 30% interest. <laughs> call him, call him. Why, your meditations have filled this house with love. Its cosmic emanation can soften any heart. He doesn't have a heart. <laughs> Don't forget, little pilgrim. You stand now possessed of new power. Project that power. Call forth to his psyche. Love, Milburn! Love! 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 Love, Milburn! Love! 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 Thief! Robber! Bandit! Did you get that? Yes, Chief. Can you imagine that orphanage superintendent trying to get a one-day extension on that mortgage? <laughs> Milburn Drysdale! Oh, it's you, Margaret. Now, look, I'm busy. I, I know, dear. Uh, but this is very important. I'm here with my guru. Your guru? Oh, guru. Oh, uh, that pony. What about him? Oh, well, darling, uh, he thinks I ought to go on a retreat. No. Oh. Uh, well, uh, dear, it's all the way to India. Just a minute, Margaret. Where's India? In the desert near Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> about a five-dollar bus ride. <laughs> I told the guru that you probably wouldn't let me go. I know it's expensive. But well, of course it's expensive, dear, but I, I'm not going to let mere money stand in the way of your spiritual growth. Yes, I'll have Miss Hathaway make arrangements for your transport. Oh, Milburn, you're wonderful. So sweet and generous. Just a loving, devoted husband, Margaret. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. The buses have steerage class. <laughs> no, they don't. Second class? It's only a short trip. Yeah, you're right. She can stand. <laughs> See if they'll give you a discount for that. Why don't you just let her ride with the luggage? I don't know. They may charge by the pound. <laughs> All right. Get her a regular ticket. It'll be worth five bucks to get her out of the house. You are a loving, devoted husband. Just average. Oh, now, wait a minute. There must be a lot of guys who would pay big money to get rid of their wives for a while. Why, I might turn this into a profitable sideline. Oh, no! Draw up a form letter. Happiness is an out-of-town wife. For the nominal sum of $100, I will have my personal guru send your wife to India. That is the lowest... No, you're right, you're right. 
Make it 200. <laughs> but my husband said that he would have his secretary arrange for my transportation. Oh, oh, my dear, that won't do at all. I have arranged a special charter flight to carry my little pilgrims. Are there many of us making the pilgrimage to Mother India? Oh, yes. Yes, my dear. It is a huge plane. I call it the Great Mother Flight. <laughs> How much will it be? Oh, because of your spiritual sensitivity, I'm making you a special reduced rate. Only, uh, $2,000. Oh, that's very reasonable. Uh, of course, that doesn't include any extras. Extras? Oh, things like food, water, place to sleep. <laughs> How much will they come to? Only $750. Yeah, it is beginning to mount up. Oh, but, th but that includes such bonus extras as your own personal meditation mat, a float trip down the Ganges, a moonlight tour of the Taj Mahal. Ah, <laughs> oh, that sounds very exciting. And for another $50, you can touch an untouchable. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to touch an untouchable. Oh, well, in that case, it'll be a hundred. What? Well, it might start a riot. They're very touchy. The untouchable? Oh, yes. Very well. That uh, comes to $2,800. Well, once you make it $3,000, i will throw in a mongoose. I don't want a mongoose. Oh, well, that's good. You're not afraid of cobras. <laughs> I'll take the mongoose. A large one. $3,000. After all, Milburn did say that he wouldn't let mere money stand in the way of my spiritual growth. You don't think Milburn had been drinking, do you? <laughs> oh, 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 my dear. No, my little pilgrim. It was your love. Your love embraces all living things. All living things. Hey, Miss Drysdale, it's me, Jethro. Not all living things. <laughs> Howdy, man. Hot dog. Yonder's your guru. Hey, can I borrow him? Borrow me. Be gone, you insensitive oaf. Boy, you really all dressed up for guru, ain't you? Oh! I done made oh. me a bit like that. I done made me a bit of ale, too. <laughs> Who was that churlish lout? The caretaker's boy? No. That's one of a herd of hillbillies who live in the mansion next door. Mansion. They think they can intrude anywhere simply because they have $80 million in my husband's bank. Eighty. Peasants. Million. Rattle. Dollars. <laughs> well, howdy, uh, mister. Can I help you? <laughs> I was guided here by the great spiritual mother. Oh, well, uh, have your mama to come in. Oh, she exists only in the mystic sense. I am the guru, Maha Mamura. Oh, you must be Miss Drydell Guru, Jethro spoke about. Uh, Jethro. Oh, that name strikes a spark in my psyche. Gets Granny fired up, too. <laughs> I sense the presence of a kindred spirit. I see a tall, sensitive youth with a great capacity for love and a great appetite for celestial harmony. Yeah, harmony, hog jowls, goat tribe, coot gobbler, you cook it, he'll eat it. <laughs> Jethro, can you come downstairs? Come in, loving uncle. Loving uncle? <laughs> love, love, love. I done conquered the flesh. I'll emanate. <laughs> ah, there is a soul that can soar. Drysdale's guru. Do it. Hey. Sorry, I fell. Only the body fell, my son. You soar. I bet he is. <laughs> you sure you all right? Shucks, loving uncle. Us gurus don't feel no pain. You tear a hole in Granny's best sheet and you'll feel pain. <laughs> guru, how about you and me going in the parlor yonder, meditate man to man? Splendid, my son. Jethro, I want some wood toted in. Oh, Go ahead, boy, I'll do it. You ain't dressed for splendors. Thanks, loving uncle. Right in here, Mr. Guru. Let's commence meditating. How? 
Hi. <laughs> Just start without me, my son. <laughs> Greetings, my daughter. Well, I ain't your daughter. Oh, how fortunate. <laughs> I was speaking in the spiritual sense. Oh, you must be Miss Drosdale's guru. I am guru to the world, my child. Are you going to learn Jethro to meditate, escape the flesh? I am. Could you learn me? Oh, you don't want to escape flesh like that. <laughs> How would you like to make a pilgrimage to Mother India with a great guru? Well, gee, I don't know. What would we do, guru? Oh, well, we'd, we'd meditate a lot and float down the Ganges while I pluck my sitar and sang the Indian love lyrics. <laughs> hey, Mr. Guru, come on! Later, my son, I'm having a spiritual conference with this lovely creature. Boy, when you see what I got waiting for you in the parlor, you won't want to waste your time with her. Really? Heck yeah, come with me! Perhaps another time, my dear. Yonder she is, a bed of nail. <laughs> Go ahead, lay down. <laughs> Son, disciple, pilgrim, dum dum. Huh? Oh, I must have been in a trance. One of the deepest I've ever seen. How about it? My guru now? Almost. There's just one little technicality before my institute can give you a guru license. You mustn't practice without one. And the authorities pick them up all the time in India. Bootleg gurus. Feed them to the hyenas. Sure enough. Sure. Horrible way to go. Very, very painful. Gurus don't feel no pain. Without a license, they do. Well, I want one. How much? A mere $50,000. $50,000? Well, now, of course, now, that's for a worldwide license. Do you spend much time in Madagascar or uh, Outer Mongolia? Hardly none. In that case, we'll give you a domestic license. Good in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. I'll take one. How much? $25,000. $25,000? Tell you what I'm going to do. Son, I like the cut of your soul. How much can you pay? Fifty cents. Fifty cents? That's my whole week's allowance. Well, what about the 80 million? Oh, that belongs to my Uncle Jeff. He said I don't get my share until I reach the age of reason. Oy vey. <laughs> well, that's just a, 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 a guru incantation. I might be able to get an advance from Uncle Jed, uh, but I hardly think he'll go for 25,000. Well, then we'll cut out Canada and Mexico. That'll bring it down to 15,000. Uh-uh. Do you travel a great deal in Maine, Wyoming, and South Dakota? No, sir. Good. That makes it possible for me to issue you what we call a limited domestic license. How much? 5,000. I'll ask. That kind of a license? Will I be able to walk on hot coals and lay on nails? Warm ashes and carpet tacks. <laughs> It's me, Granny Jethro. Hey, Uncle Jed, can I have an advance of $5,000 on my dowry? Your dowry? You know, what I get when I reach the age of reason. You mess up any more of my sheets and you ain't gonna reach it. What do you want to do with the money, boy? To give to the Maharishi for what you call a limited domestic guru in license. Hogwash! It's much deep. If I go to guru and without it, the hyenas will get me. Hey, Sexton, I get you first. Oh, Granny. Please let me have it, Uncle Jed. For only $5,000, the guru will learn me the secrets of the Far East. Well, I'll tell you what you do, boy. You go stand on your head a while, and I'll think it over. All right, Uncle Jed, but hurry, would you? <laughs> I wish we knew if that guru was telling the truth. Just give me five minutes with him. I'll get the truth out of him. Now, Granny, he's a guest in our house, and you ain't going to stomp him. There's another way. I'll give him a shot of my Tennessee truth tonic. You talking about your corn squeezes? It oils the tongue, loosens the jaw, and lays bare the secrets of the soul. What if you don't drink? I know how to prime the pump. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. 
a guru. Nice day, ain't it? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Shall we drink to that? Oh, we gurus are abstainers. <laughs> this will take out stains. <laughs> what is it? Oh, just a little branch water run through some cornmeal. Cornmeal? It won't hurt you. See? Oh, that's good. Well, we gurus uh, should keep open minds. A little open minds, sinuses, pores. <laughs> Melvin Drysdale, this is your wife's guru? Oh, just a minute. Uh, the great mother has a message for you. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale on the phone. <laughs> oh, you are the queen of gurus. You ain't just whistling Dixie, brother. <laughs> Hello. Make it snappy, Margaret. Oh, Granny! <laughs> oh, well, what can I do for you? Oh, you're going to India with the guru. <laughs> no, Granny, I think you mean Indio. India? <laughs> with your money in the bank of Bangalore? Oh, listen, Granny. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dirty double crosser. <laughs> If there's one thing I can't stand, it's greed. <laughs> Call operator. Give me the police. I want to report a fake guru. Hey, you baby. When you see my outfit, it'll kill him in Calcutta. Come in. Peace, brother. It's wonderful. Good. You're going to get about 30 days of it. <laughs> You did? Oh, that's great. Thank you, Sergeant. <laughs> that guru's on the way to jail. Oh, Granny will never forget me for this. Hello, let me out of here. Is this the way to Calcutta? <laughs> <laughs> this has been a film wise presentation. before you do. This time I'm really going to beat you. Mom's <laughs> <laughs> gone mad. You sound like a scarlet dog. Yes, Miss Drysdale has run amok. She's chasing Mr. Drysdale around the backyard. Chasing Mr. Drysdale? Yeah, she done caught him once. She stripped him right down to his underwear. Well, why would she do that? Must have done that when she was strangling him. Strangling him? Yeah, his face is all red. His eyes are bulging. You could use his head for Halloween. I just can't believe it. Well, you believe it. When you see his tongue hanging out, it looks like he hiccuped his liver. Come on, if you've got the stomach. <laughs> Always thinking of yourself, Milburn. Why couldn't you collapse on the walk? You know those grass stains won't come out. Oh, heart, Margaret. Oh, I've got a crap in my muscle. What muscle? You've got a spasm in your flab. <laughs> oh, 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 Margaret, you're killing me. Oh, 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 oh. Jed, we got here just in time. 
She's going to grab that other leg of his and make a wishbone out of him. Maybe it's some sort of a game, Granny. Well, if it is, there's going to be an undertaker keeping score. I'm going over there. Granny, if Mr. Drysdale ever found out that we seen this, he'd never be able to hold up his head again. Well, if we don't stop her, he ain't going to have no head to hold up. Come on, Granny. You don't want to stop a fight. You just want to get in on one. Oh, you've got an evil mind. <laughs> Jed, please, at least let me claim the body. That brute will bury him in his underwear. <laughs> now, now, stop worrying about me. The only thing worrying me is whether or not we will be accepted by the Beverly Hills Jogging Club. All the best people are in it. It'll help us socially. Margaret, do you always have to have an angle? I'm joining for health reasons. You want the members to put money in your bank. So what's wrong with a healthy bank? <laughs> I'll, I'll be at the office. Jed, there's only one person to blame for that violence next door. Who's that? You. Me? You stopped me from scrapping with Miss Drysdale. <laughs> you didn't see her acting up like this when I was whooping her regular. Oh, Granny. Spare the rod and spoil the neighbor. <laughs> and this is just the start. Whooping a man is heady stuff. First her husband, then it'll be the postman, the garbage man, the newspaper boy. Granny, I still got a feeling we don't know all the facts. Well, I know one fact. We is getting Ellie Mae and Jethro out of this neighborhood. Here I am over here setting an example of meekness and kindness and Christian forbearance. And that husband beating Huzzy over there, tearing down everything I'm doing over here. Ooh, ow. Granny, you get any meeker, you're going to break some bones. Don't make jokes. Oh, Granny. Oh, here comes the sweet darling now. Huzzy Jethro. Too late, Jed. She's done been bit by the beaten bug. You beat Jethro? All the way to the airport and back. Beat him back. <laughs> Don't blame her, boy. The sins of the neighbors have been visited unto the children, even unto their underwear. <laughs> What's she talking about, Uncle Jed? She thinks Ellie tore your clothes off and gave you a beat. Beat? We ain't been fighting, Granny. We've been jogging. Did you hear that, Jed? They've been jogging. Oh, that my grandchildren should ever come to this. Oh, what's jogging? Hey, jogging ain't nothing but running. Running? Yeah, it's good for you, too. Movie stars and everybody's doing it. Mr. Drysdale's even joining the jogging club. Ellie and me's getting one up ourselves. She's going to wear an outfit just like mine. You mean Mr. Drysdale goes jogging in an outfit just like yours? Yes, sir. Ain't you seen him in his backyard? Oh, yeah, we seen him all right. You satisfied now, Granny? No, I ain't. He's too old for that nonsense. <laughs> Granny, it's for your health. Well, Mr. Drysdale says it lowers your cholesterol. That's cholesterol. Well, it lowered his till it was dragging. Just be happy, Mr. Drysdale finally found something to get his mind off of money. Oh, this idiotic jogging business is going to get me $30 million. $30 million? Chief, that's ridiculous. What does the name Jason Detweiler mean to you? $30 million. And he's president of the Beverly Hills Jogging Club. He's one of these physical fitness nuts. So? So this is my big chance to grab off that $30 million account. I happen to know his own banker, Carl Wagner, will not go jogging with him. You also happen to know that Mr. Wagner's 84 years old and has to walk with a cane. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Gee, I hope you choke on that $30 million. Oh, what a way to go. Fortunately, justice will prevail. In order to join a jogging club, you must have a doctor's statement saying that you are physically fit. With your freaky up and down blood pressure, you'll never get one. <laughs> That's all you know. I have one right here. Just sign. Me? Just scribble your name above where it says M.D. But I am not a doctor. But no one's ever been able to read a doctor's handwriting. <laughs> Just sign. Chief, I absolutely refuse. Okay. I uh, know a brain surgeon who'll sign it. What brain surgeon? Jethro. <laughs> Mr. 
Drysdale or Miss Jane. Hi, Granny. Is Jethro here? No, he ain't. Well, I'll be back. Oh, wait, Chief. You're in luck. Huh? Granny here is a real doctor. <laughs> you need a doctor? Oh, no, no. Oh, yes, he does. Show him the statement, Chief. What statement? Well, it just gives me permission to jog across your property. <laughs> well, all right. Oh, well, just uh, sign right there. Get your hand out of the way. I can't see what I'm signing. Well, it, it, it's just a simple statement. It's certifying that he is in perfect physical condition. Oh. Well, I can't sign that without I give him a complete physical examination first. Really? <laughs> you take him into my examination room whilst I get my medical tool. Oh, no. S some other time, Granny. I have an appointment at the bank. No, you haven't. Come on. We're going to pay for this. No, we ain't. There's no charge to next of kin and neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> well, his heart's good. Something like... Fine, it. fine. Now for the old blood pressure. Hold it. Did you ever swallow a cash register? <laughs> swallow a cash register? <laughs> Listen to it. Put a nickel in his mouth, pull his ears, and play him for a slot machine. <laughs> Granny's just having fun with you. All eminent physicians recognize that sound as a harmless little occupational peculiarity. Bankers flutter. Flutter? <laughs> yeah, but you're going to be in trouble if that tongue gets caught in that cash drawer. Don't worry. Now let's get on with the blood pressure. Well, th this I have to see. Uh, Granny, his freak blood pressure gets so high sometimes, it could wreck your equipment. Oh, knock it off. Well, it, it does have range. However, eminent physicians are only amazed by it, not alarmed. Well, my heavy-duty equipment will take care of it. <laughs> That's a tire pump and a tire gauge. Perhaps you have... Tired blood. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with his blood pressure right on the head. See what a different good equipment makes. <laughs> Mr. Dry, do you? Something the matter? Oh, no. Granny's just giving me a little checkup so I can join a jogging club. Oh, you sure started something with that jogging. Jethro and Ellie jogged all the way to the airport and back. Well, that's 15 miles. Oh, I wish I could have joined them. No reason why you can't. Your blood pressure is fine. Ah! Look at it. It's done jumped up 40 pounds. Go get my jar of leeches, Jed. I gotta bleed them. Oh, no, Granny. With my kind of blood pressure, bleeding me with leeches won't help. They'll have to do. I ain't got no vampire bats. <laughs> What's the matter? It's back down to normal. I told you, Granny. Granny, you better give that machine back to the filling station. It's a precision instrument. It can measure a mosquito. <laughs> ah! There it goes again. Ed, get the jumbo leeches, the bulls. Granny, please. Save your strength. You ain't got but a few seconds. Any last words you want to give to your poor, brutal widow? Gra Granny, it's not that bad. Not that bad. Look at the... <laughs> Jed. What's the matter now? It's normal again. Jed, stay right where you are. I got the answer. You know what your trouble is? You is allergic to Jed Clampett. What? You is allergic to Jed Clampett. Jed is over yonder, your blood pressure is normal. But when he's over here, apoplexy. Oh, oh no. No, oh, yeah. Jed, you have got to stay away from Mr. Drysdale. Well, sure. Do anything I can. Would you like for me to take my money out of your bank, Mr. Drysdale? Oh, no. No. I love you. I love you. You can bank my mail. Ain't that sweet? I hate to break up such a beautiful friendship. Wait. The, the same thing has happened when his insurance doctors examined him at the bank. G Granny, I think you have solved a mystery that has baffled the medical world for years. M Mr. Clavin, are you carrying what you call your walking around money? You mean this? Put it back, Jim. Put it back. Look at that thing. It's going to explode. <laughs> That helped? That's not it. You see, Granny, he's not allergic.
allergic to Mr. Clampett. He just becomes overly excited by a proximity to large sums of money. Really, Miss Hathaway? Are you presuming to explain bodily reactions to Dr. Daisy after the brilliant discovery she has just made? <laughs> yeah. You gonna be all right, Granny? Oh, of course. That up and down blood pressure is what us doctors call the banker's bounce. Good, good. Now you can sign my medical statement for the Joggins Club. No, better make out my own statement. You ain't no run-of-the-mill case, you know. <laughs> but, Granny... I'll get it. Granny, do you really think it's all right for the chief to jog? Yeah, but I ain't gonna lie for him. I, Dr. Daisy Moses, have examined this man and found him in... Uh, unbelievable shape. <laughs> Oh, Granny, you're wonderful. I think the word is tactful. Mr. Dreiser, that was your bank calling. They said there's a Mr. Detweiler on his way over here to see you. Oh, Mr. Detweiler, he's president of the Beverly Hills Jogging Club. He insists upon jogging with each applicant for membership to see if they measure up to his strict standards. Well, if he's the head of the club, you might have your work cut out for you. <laughs> Don't you worry about old Milerman at Milburn. Well, I'm giving him a few years, but I'll be out there right ahead of him. That's him. Oh, I, I get it. He may want to start right away. And thank you, Dr. Daisy. Don't step on that tongue. Good luck. I'm really confident for some reason. Oh, I'm going to give you a run for your money. <laughs> ah, Mr. Detweiler, I've just passed my physical. I'm ready for you. Well, where's your jogging outfit, Drysdale? Over at my house. It won't take me a minute to change. Good. Uh, I understand your banker doesn't jog. No, that's too bad, too. He's, I love to discuss business while I'm running. Oh, oh, me too. Well, shall we sprint over to my place? Uh, pretty fast, are you? Well, my secretary constantly compares me with the fastest of all animals. The cheetah? That's what she calls me. <laughs> well, he's ready. Come on, Ellie, let's go. jogging outfit. Yeah, it's real cute, Ellie, but uh, you're showing more meat than a butcher's window. <laughs> you gonna be able to run in that get up? Yeah, but she's gonna run right upstairs and put on some more clothes. Oh, Granny, you want folks to stare at you? Granny, I'm the president. Who's gonna be looking at her? <laughs> You've got to have a fireside chat with the principal. <laughs> but Granny, they said at the store this is what ladies wear a jogging. Can't you get it through your head? When you plays football, you wears a football uniform. And when you goes jogging, you wears a jogging uniform. Nonsense. Your uncle didn't have no uniform, and he'd just run 12 miles. Looking like that. I sure hope you didn't tell nobody you was the president's uncle. Who in their right mind would want to own up to being your uncle? Granny. Do you feel better, Pa? You will, Uncle Jack. I've been reading about it. It builds up your hemoglobins, it limbers your lungs, and it increases your appetite. That's all we need. Food getting short all over the world. And Mighty Mouth increasing his appetite. <laughs> well, Granny, jogging makes you lose weight, too. With him eating more, everybody will lose weight. All right, Granny. Look, youngins, you're going with your jogging, I'll smooth Granny's feathers. Let's go, Ellie. Don't worry, Granny. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Keep your eye out for Mr. Drysdale. He's jogging with a Mr. Detweiler. Jed, here comes Mr. Drysdale now. But he ain't jogging. Well, doggies. <laughs> what happened to Mr. Drysdale? Well, some stupid doctor happened to him. Where is the ignoramus? Right here. You're the doctor? You're the quack who gave a certificate of physical fitness to this... This basket case? <laughs> hey, he's in no more condition to jog than... Well, you are. You want a jog, Buster? Madam, at your age, you are not a jogger, but a creeper. <laughs> Mister, you have insulted a great doctor just about every way you can. I can't let her whoop you with her hands, but I'm obliged to let her try it with her feet. I feel it only fair to warn you that I used to run cross-country for Pennsylvania teachers. 
Oh, a woman chaser, huh? <laughs> I was referring to intercollegiate competition. Why, we used to run for miles and miles, through woods, across streams, over fences. Sounds like the kind of running Granny used to do back in the hill. Yeah. How would you like to try a little follow the leader? <laughs> Madam, you could never follow me. You try following me. <laughs> but you're not even wearing jogging shorts. Considering the competition, <laughs> these will do. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, Granny will even the score for you. <laughs> but Granny can't get me into that jogging club. Well, if getting into a club is always worrying you, you can join Jethro. Oh, no. No. <laughs> The Beverly Hills Jogging Club is composed of financiers, tycoons, industrial giants. Well, they can join, too. Jethro will take anybody. I see Ms. Drysdale out in your backyard. We'll get her in the jogging club, too. Oh, she'll cry when I stop. I'm glad to do it. I'll tell you what else we're going to do. Guess Rose is going to put across everybody's chest, sponsored by the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. Oh, no. Oh, that's, that's too much, really. I don't deserve to be in the club. Well, all right, but... Uncle Jed! Hi, Paul! Well, what's all this? Uncle Jed! He's quitting the Beverly Hills Club and joining ours. They seen us jogging. Started following us for some reason. I wonder why they done that. Do you know who these men are? There's William Woodson, the steel tycoon. And Jonathan Pierce, the real estate man. I told you they'd take anybody. <laughs> Howdy. Excuse me, Mr. Clavett. Gentlemen, we're delighted that you want to join our club, but it is my duty as treasurer to inform you that we have a rather steep initiation fee. However, it can be financed at the Commerce... Hold on a second. I think here comes another member. What happened, Granny? Poor old Goober, give out, Jed. Looks like he's going to be chasing no more Pennsylvania teachers. <laughs> He couldn't even catch me. <laughs> black hat, black boots, black belt. Bad news for the bad guys. Walker, Texas Ranger. Weeknights at 6 on the Hallmark Channel. Night falls. Darkness closes in. A mystery unfolds. Hallmark Channel introduces a series of original movies. Kelly Martin as Mystery Woman, Joan Larroquette as McBride, and Leah Thompson as Jane Doe. The Hallmark Channel Mystery Movie, Friday night at 9. Y'all come back now, dear. One smell beats magnolias and honeysuckle, and that is your collard greens and fatback. Well, Jed, spring wouldn't be spring unless I whopped up a good big pot of collards and thigh meat. You got wild onions in there? Just like back home. I hope you're gonna have plenty of cornbread to crumble in the pot liquor. Oh, you betcha. That reminds me, I better go stir it up. Will you guard my pot for me? Why, sure. But it ain't likely any critter would bother boiling green. There's one that will. And he's been sitting up in the tree for the last three hours, waiting for me to go into the house so he can swoop down. Sound like a buzzard. You're close. It's the ten-toed, black-tufted vittle snatcher. Here's your water, Granny. Oh, thank you, darling. Just pour it in the pot. Come on down from there, Jethro. Can't hear you, Uncle Jed. I got chores for you. I didn't hear that, neither. Well, I got a trick that'll get him down. Well, good. Go to it. 
Ted, let's have a sociable this evening like we used to have back home in the hills when I cooked my spring collards. Good idea, Granny. I'll invite some neighbors in. Back home, we didn't have to invite them. That's the truth, especially the ones that live downwind. <laughs> Jethro. He bounced right back up. Twice. Don't look like he's hurt. Ah, he's fine. Did you know what Ellie done to me? Yeah, she tricked you out of the tree. Some trick. She throwed me 40 feet on my head. Well, you can fill in the hole later. Right now, we got to get ready for the spring eating festival. Hot dog. I'm cooking. Four bushels of greens, a peck of wild onions, and 20 pounds of fat back. We're hoping some neighbors mm. will drop in. The neighbors? That ain't hardly enough for me. I mean, us. <laughs> Granny, you reckon I could have a little helping to hold me till supper? Well, all right, boy. Go fetch a plate. Here, just fill this. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? You're letting Mrs. Drysdale sell the house? A prospective buyer's coming this morning to look it over. But you live right next door to the club, but I can't picture you ever leaving. Well, I promised Margaret if she'd stick it out for seven years, I'd let her sell the house. And I am a man of my word. Well, congratulations. You've got newfound courage. You've got self-confidence and maturity. Thanks. I've also got an option to buy the house on the other side of the clampets. But your wife will be in the same spot. Not exactly. The new house is 25 feet closer. <laughs> you, you, you've got to think twice about this. Your, your wife just might leave you. Hadn't thought of that. No, I don't want to dream the impossible dream. <laughs> yes. Oh, hello, Margaret. Milton, darling, I hesitate to bother you. You've been so sweet about selling the house. So what's the problem? Well, our prospective buyer is a celebrity. Doubtless a man of fastidious taste. And I'm afraid when I show him around, he's going to be nauseated. Well, that's simple. Just don't talk so much. <laughs> I was referring to the fact that Granny is cooking some witch's brew out for the pool, and the stench is blowing this way. Well, maybe the wind will change before the buyer gets there. Don't worry about it. And, oh, oh Margaret, you get upset with me at times, but you wouldn't ever leave me, would you? Of course not, darling. OK. Goodbye. Don't ever get my hopes up like that again. <laughs> Chief, if I may ask, who is the prospective buyer? The famous entertainer, Pat Boone. Pat Boone? How marvelous! You know him? Well, not personally, of course, but I understand he's a perfectly charming man. Tremendously talented and yet modest and unassuming. And sure to find human being as well as a great artist. Never mind that. I want to know about the important virtues. He got money. Where does he bank? Chief, has it ever occurred to you, have you ever entertained the thought that there just might be something in this world more important than money? Of course. I not only entertained the thought, I mentioned it to my father. I said, Dad, there must be something in this world more important than money. That's when I grew the mustache. Why a mustache? To hide the scar. He hit me right in the mouth. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Drysdale, and I know you're going to adore my lovely home. Do come right in, Mr. Boone. I'm uh, Mr. Boone's manager, Mr. Tucker. Oh, could he come? Uh, this is Mr. Boone. I got him back from a fishing trip to look at your house. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Boone? Oh, how do you do? May I ask where that unusual odor is coming from? Odor? You must mean the exotic orchid fertilizer. My next door neighbor is an orchidist. Really? Uh, the first day of spring, we have this uh, unusual odor for a few hours, and from then on, it's just heavenly fragrance. Please do. Hurry right in. Doc, you go ahead. I'm going to find out who's cooking those collards and fat backs. Is that what that odor really is? Man, that odor's perfume to me. I haven't smelled anything that wonderful since I left Nashville. Collard greens, collard greens, good old collard greens. Cornbread and fat, fat, good old collard greens. Collard greens, collard greens, good 
good old collard greens, cornbread and fat back, back, good old collard greens. Where did you come from to know that song? Nashville, Tennessee, ma'am. Tennessee! <laughs> yeah, and I haven't smelled anything that good since I left Tennessee. Oh, you poor boy. What you been eating? Oh, steak mainly, lobster, prime rib, shrimp. Well, I reckon when you get hungry enough, you can eat anything. <laughs> What's your name, son? Pat Boone, ma'am. Mine's Granny Moses. Maybe you'd heard about my doctor. You're a doctor? Probably the most famous betwixt Bug Tussle and Springfield. Springfield? Did you ever know Red Foley? Did I know Red Foley? He never missed the spring that he didn't come to our house for collards and fatback. Ha <laughs> ha, that's great. How long you been here in California? Seven years. When did you leave Tennessee? Oh, 15 years ago. What you been doing all that time? Singing, mainly. Oh, no steady work, huh? Well, who's this young fella? His name is Pat Boone, Jed. Smell my collards cooking and come a-running. Oh, glad to have you, son. Where are you from? Tennessee. My doggies, I've known Granny's collars to pull them in from a long way off, but this is a new record. He was in the neighborhood when he smelled them, Jed. I figured as much, Granny. Uh, ex excuse me, uh, uh, would you like to stir? Oh, I'd love to. He's a drifter, Jed. Left home 15 years ago and ain't had a steady job since. <laughs> ain't had a decent meal neither, poor boy. Let's offer to take him in. Maybe we can help him get work. Good. <laughs> Son, uh, we got a fine big house here with plenty of room. We'd be pleased to have you stay with us. Oh, I sure do thank you, but I've got a place to stay. Now, don't be proud, Pat. Sleeping in freight yards can be dangerous. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not sleeping in freight yards. Well, then, uh, how about dropping around about sundown and having some uh, collars and fat back with us? Now, that I would purely love. You like cornbread and pot liquor? Does a possum like persimmons? <laughs> Speaking of possum, uh, Granny's gonna bake a few for tonight. With sweet taters. Oh, now you're making me homesick. Well. See you tonight. Listen, how can I thank you folks? You got a guitar? Sure. Good. Fetch it along this evening and you can sing for your supper. Oh, you plan to sing, do you? Well, that's how I've been making my living. Well, uh, as long as you enjoy it. <laughs> Money and everything. <laughs> uh, speaking of money, I reckon you could use a little. Oh, no, no thanks. I'll be all right. Oh, don't be bashful. I've been broke myself. I know what it's like. <laughs> oh, you're early, Mr. Policeman. We ain't gonna be eating till sundown. Uh, you can't build an open fire in Beverly Hills. Oh, sure you can. All you need is seasoned wood. <laughs> well, what I mean is... Wait a minute, aren't you Pat Boone? Oh, uh, well... Well, sure you are. I've got your latest record. Boy's got a record, is he? <laughs> well, sure, a bunch of them. Uh, haven't you seen his pictures? No, we don't get down to the post office much. <laughs> Please don't arrest him, Mr. Policeman. He's a good boy. He just fell on hard times. I'll vouch for that. Is this really on the level? I don't know who you are? Uh, that's right, officer, and uh, I'd like to keep it that way. Couldn't you parole him to us? We'll help him. How about if he give up singing and playing? and takes an honest job. Well, thanks, Granny, but I I'm just going to go along quietly with the officer. Well, will we see you tonight? Oh, I'll be here. Nothing can stop me. Don't bust out of jail, Pat. Even Granny's collars ain't worth that. I'll smuggle your mess to the jail. There'll be a file in the fat back. <laughs> I hope they don't lock him up, Jed. I reckon it goes hard on you once you got a record. And him with his picture in the post office. Well, we look after him. Yes, he's right here. Mr. Clapper, for you, Chief. Oh. Mr. Clapper, what can I do for you? Well, first off, we'd like to invite you and Miss Jean to come by this evening for collard greens and fatback. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, we'd love it. What's fatback? What's fatback? 
What's fat bag? <laughs> Meat? Oh, oh yeah, yes, Mr. Clamber. I was just explaining to Miss Hathaway what fat bag was. <laughs> yeah, good day. Good. We're going to have a little entertainment, too. A boy by the name of Pat Boone? Pat Boone? I know you never heard of him. He's from back in our part of the country. He happened to smell Granny's collars of cooking, and he come a-running. Oh, he likes collards, does he? He's just crazy about them. We all been hitting it off real good. Well, fine. We'll be looking for you. Bye. Oh, this is beautiful. Pat Boone met the Clampers and loved them. And the Granny's vittles. Really? Yes, he's a collard addict. <laughs> now he'll give me anything for my house. I'll call Margaret and tell her to raise the price to a quarter of a million. <laughs> no. Why, give her the pleasure. <laughs> this is the kind of thing I do so well. Blocking a pigeon. <laughs> well, Mr. Tucker, I'm sure you'll agree that this is a delightful home and well worth 200000 Well, of course, that will be up to Mr. Boone. Uh, where is he, by the way? Uh, he went next door. Oh, no. Uh, Mr. Tucker, I'm going to give you the opportunity to be a big hero in the eyes of your client. Let's say uh, 100000 I'm sure Mr. Boone will be pleased to hear that. Why did he go next door? To investigate that odor. Oh, dear. They would have to fertilize their orchids today. And uh, let's say 50,000. <laughs> Mr. Boone didn't think it was orchid fertilizer. He thought someone was cooking collard greens in the fat bag. 25,000. And I'll throw in all the furniture. Mrs. Drysdale. 10. Sign here. <laughs> I've sold the house. Oh, Margaret, you should have waited for me. I could have got a... You, you got a million dollars? Look again, dear. Don't tell me you sold this place for a hundred thousand. No, look again. Ken? Oh, <laughs> no wonder you were yelling, free, free. Oh, we take a little loss. It's worth it to get away from Granny's vile concoctions. That fool would have paid a quarter of a million for this house. Not after he smells that vile hillbilly brew. He loves it. He's a hillbilly himself. You just blew $240,000. If you wish to continue this conversation, please lower your voice. Is this low enough? Much better. Can you hear me? Yes. But smile. How's this? Ah. Now, what do you wish to say? I'm going to strangle you. <laughs> Hair tie me, ready? Is Mr. Boone here yet? Ellie May, you ain't bringing that vomit to the Colin Festival. Oh, Granny, he just loves your biscuits and sorghum. Ellie, honey, a bear makes a poor chaperone. Mr. Boone is liable to get the idea that we don't trust him with you. There he is. Quick, hide the bear. Granny, you don't quick hide a 500-pound bear. <laughs> well, Miss Jane. My time for the Colored Festival? You bet you are. Granny, Ellie, Fairchild. <laughs> First, Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale. Oh, they'll be delayed. They're having a little contretemps. Well, they had not to eat before they come. <laughs> Let them eat, Jim. Twitch Miss Drysdale and Jeffro, there won't be enough for the moon boy. Yeah, and he's liable to be hungry. They don't feed him too good in jail. Are you by any chance referring to Pat Boone? You know him, do you? Well, not personally, but I've seen his pictures. And you know he got a record. Well, he has many records. Yeah, that's what the policeman said when he took him away. I still see he ain't a bad boy. He just got roving feet. I wonder if he's had a kin to Daniel Boone. Well, as a matter of fact, Pat Boone is a direct descendant of Daniel Boone. There you are, Granny. The boy come by it honest. Old Daniel sure had wandering ways. Is it possible you don't know that Pat Boone is famous? I reckon he is. With his picture in every post office and his record in every police station. <laughs> Jed, Granny? Oh, hi, Miss Jane. Jeffro. Folks is commencing to gather out by the cement pond. Come on, let's go. What about that bear? Well, Granny, if he's kin to Daniel Boone, he won't be scared of no bear. The girl's right, Granny. Come on, let's go. <laughs> now remember, Tuck, these folks think I'm just sort of a singing hobo, and I like it that way. You mean you're going to sing for nothing? Don't worry, you're going to get your 10% of my collards and fat back. 
Some deal. Speaking of deals, did you tell Drysdale we're not going to hold him to that $10,000 price? I'll tell him when he gets here. You worry. Let him. I read the fine print on that agreement. With the interest he charges, he could still get $200,000 for that house. <laughs> Every time I see that greyhound bus go rolling down the line Makes me wish I'd talk much more to you when we had all that time The last of me, honey I may go on down to Chattanooga Walk up there on Lookout Mountain Take a look but I ain't gonna see you. I may come on into Fayetteville, Shelbyville, maybe even Beagle. Drop off in Madison. But I ain't crossing that Davidson County line no more. What do you think, Jeffro? You gonna handle him? Oh, he needs too much work, Uncle Jed. He got to change his name, his style of singing, his whole image. He just ain't working. <laughs> Nights on Hallmark. Watch great stories and witness the miracles. Imagine that. Touched by an angel. Weeknights at 8 on the Hallmark Channel. Everything we found indicates that he's the one. Can you help me? For top defense attorney Mike McBride, there's more to this case than meets the eye. See John LaRoquette in the Hallmark Channel mystery movie, McBride, The Chameleon Murder, premieres Friday night at 9, only on the Hallmark Channel. Back now, here. This has been a film-wise press.